Warning, spoilers for WandaVision, every Star Wars streaming show, Falcon Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, blah 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 blah, Peacemaker, The Boys, Season 3, you get the gist. Miss Marvel has been gracing our screens week to week and it's decent. I like Kamala Khan and Eamon Vellani is doing a great job in the role, plus it has a bit more artistic flair than the usual Marvel offerings. Excuse me Stanley. It looks set to capitalise on the high school angle of the homecoming films, and I think it could be a lot of fun. Plus, anything that manages to make the Captain Marvel films suck less arse is a noble aspiration in my book. Not even Eamon Villani liked that movie. But I have to say, I'm not very enthused by the fact that it's a six-parter, because at this point, every single six-part Disney Plus show has struggled to perfect that structure. Even Loki didn't quite stick the landing with the finale, and its third episode wasn't really of much consequence compared to the other stellar episodes. This is the best case scenario we're dealing with here. From Loki, every other six-parter just gets worse in terms of its structure and pacing. This isn't exclusive to Marvel, the Star Wars shows have suffered too. I think the conception around all of these shows is that they're better than getting just a movie because we get more time with the characters. Two hours of Kenobi is great and all, but six hours means we get even more screen time with the Jedi Master after almost 20 years. That's awesome, right? The Kenobi show has shown some brilliance, particularly in its character study of old Ben. I like that he's been a mopey sad boy, and we've really felt the weight of his past actions and the toll that has taken on his psyche. But we've also had to endure a lot of padding to get to and from the moments we're really here for. Surprise, surprise, the one Disney Plus show that has ended up aging the best is the one that actually used the medium to its fullest. A true TV show and not a six hour movie, put together in a way that didn't feel disjointed or clutching for time. That show is, of course, Hawkeye. No, I'm just kidding. It's WandaVision. How can you be certain? It's not that kind of show. This video is made in partnership with a brand you've no doubt heard of. NordVPN. You've probably heard about it for very good reason. If you're looking to improve and protect your online experience, NordVPN is your best bet. NordVPN offers many different features, such as a kill switch, which acts like the last line of defense from accidental data exposure. They also have a no logs policy, so you can be confident they don't keep any record of the data that passes through. NordVPN works on your computer or your mobile device, and you can connect up to six devices. My favorite feature whilst using NordVPN is being able to change my online location, allowing me to unlock content that I wouldn't normally be able to access in different countries. With a VPN, I can unlock the full power of this fully armed and operational Netflix subscription. But you knew that already. Come on. Why am I still talking? You need a VPN, I need a VPN, we all need a VPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash fullfatvideos or click on my link in the description and use code fullfatvideos to get a two-year plan with a huge discount plus one additional month three. Gatsy! WandaVision was designed and structured to be a TV show. The concept of jumping through the decades to give us a different era of television each week, starting with the I Love Lucy double bill rolling straight through to Malcolm in the Middle, was more than just a gimmick. It gave the episodes purpose. It allowed the show to peel away more of the why behind Wanda's construct of reality. I think something's wrong here, Wanda. Yes, I know what you mean. It also meant that the more standard MCU fare was more restricted, so that when we got more action towards the end, it was a nice gear change. All of the other Disney Plus shows could be movies. There's nothing inherently complex about any of the stories they're trying to tell that couldn't hit the same emotional crescendos in two and a half hours. Moon Knight could have been a movie. Loki could have been a movie, and I'm thinking Miss Marvel will probably end up being the same. Hell, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is basically already Captain America 4. If that show was a two and a half hour movie, you'd immediately jettison the unnecessary Madripoor detour, and the focus would remain firmly on its strongest threat, John Walker. She came here because we're all... She came here because we're all what? What are you trying to tell me? WandaVision is really the only Disney Plus show that couldn't be a movie, and that's why it works the best. You need that week-to-week -week format if you're going to jump through different eras of TV. You need to draw things out if you're going to structure the mystery around this TV format. And it feels right at home in your living room when you find out that Wanda's connection to television is unexpectedly personal. By the end of the episode, you realise it was all a bad dream. Wanda used TV as a coping mechanism. 
plots and mysteries to distract from the grief that was overwhelming her. The aesthetic changes week to week were a nice novelty, but also ended up being key to the show's most poignant moment. But what is grief? If not love, persevering. It was never intended to release during a pandemic, of course, but it certainly added another layer of depth to be given this show week to week in the midst of another depressing lockdown. You might have gone to WandaVision to escape and found yourself feeling more than you intended to. Oh. <laughs> Pardon? No, it was funny. Sure, you could do this television hopping as a two-hour movie, but you want 30 minutes to get a full I Love Lucy episode. The first two episodes work only because they commit to the bit. We actually thought you were serious. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. It's strange. I feel like the Marvel films that have graced the big screen almost feel like the ones that should be TV at the moment. Eternals takes place over thousands of years with a whole new cast of characters and could have totally benefited from a well-structured episodic format to really give some much needed texture to all those people and the time periods in which significant life events happened. <laughs> Spider-Man belongs on film, and I know Sony is committed to theatrical, thankfully, but reintroducing five old villains and two past Spider-Men, all whilst honouring the relationships from the previous two Holland features and Doctor Strange, leaves the whole thing clamouring for space. James Cameron recently talked about the idea of flirting with a two-hour theatrical cut of something alongside a six-hour home release cut. I think that's an incredible idea, particularly in the age of streaming. Imagine if we'd have gotten No Way Home in the theatres as is, and then a longer episodic cut on streaming six months later. That would be different to just stretching out a two-hour idea over six episodes, as is often the case on Disney+. Plus. There's so many characters and spinning plates in No Way Home that I think you could easily delve further into all the villains and heroes of this piece for juicier results. I loved seeing all three of the Spider-Men together, but I can't help but look to something like Day of the Doctor, which devotes a lot more screen time to the trope of having a character meet themselves twice over, rather than something that just happens towards the third act. All of the Disney Plus shows have struggled to fill their run times. Consistently, the third episodes of the six episode runs tread water, often feeling like we're going on a side quest that doesn't especially matter. This is where a lot of them start to feel like stretched out movies, for the worse. Now you will suffer, Obi Wan. Kenobi's third episode might end up in a cool place, but do we really need to see Ben and Leia trek across this bland planet to get to that moment? I think in a movie that was paced to be around two and a half hours, the second and third episodes would probably be about 20 minutes apiece, and that would flow a lot better, without sacrificing the key details that we're actually here for. You didn't know. He's alive, Obi-Wan. Just because something is longer doesn't mean it's automatically going to be better. And as for that fourth episode, I doubt we'd have time to screw around with Leia getting captured and freed again in a two hour story. That filler would have been excised entirely and it would have been all the better for it. I had a lot of goodwill towards Moon Knight in its first two episodes, despite being burnt out on a lot of this shared universe stuff, but even that faced the same problem when it came to a middling third and fourth episode. Episode three was downright abysmal. <laughs> and even some strong horror direction by Benson and Moorhead couldn't save it losing steam in episode 4. I have been told that episode 5 is really good and, look, I'm sure it is, characters have always been the MCU's strong suit, but I just can't bring myself to watch it. It got so boring, I'll get back to it at some point, but we're just bombarded with so many 6 hour movies, it's almost impossible to keep up and have a life. I really tapped out when the show started trying to convince Steven and the audience that the psychiatric hospital could be the real world. It's like, yeah, no, there's no way it is. Why are we even bothering to go down this road? Part of what intrigued me from the trailer was this idea that Steven wouldn't be able to differentiate between truth and fiction, reality and dreams. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. <laughs> But very early on in the series, it is abundantly clear what is real, and so this turn of events as late as episode 4 feels very unearned and redundant. Make a move extreme. Make a move. 
This year, DC and Warner Brothers dropped Peacemaker on HBO Max, and that looked and felt way cheaper than any of the Marvel and Star Wars shows we've had, but guess what? It was leagues ahead of any of them because it was built from the ground up to behave like TV rather than a stretched out movie. Each week we found out more about its wonderful cast of anti-heroes and the butterfly threat they sought to uncover. The end always left me wanting more. Peacemaker is one of the only superheroes outside of Wonder and Vision that made the jump to television and worked. Hey, you're probably right about one thing, I am a piece of shit! I'm a piece of shit for listening to you for all those years! I'm not particularly excited for the future of Star Wars. I was worried when they announced that they were going to release annualized movies, because the whole point of Star Wars is that it should feel like a massive event. But now I'm wishing we could go back to that over existing purely on TV. In just three years alone, we've been inundated with hours and hours of Star Wars content, and it is just starting to feel really cheap, in spite of the huge budgets and movie stars taking part in it. You can't just stretch out a two hour movie idea to six hours and call it a six hour movie when you're trying to make a TV show. The Mandalorian has been good and worked being a TV show to its benefit, but unlike WandaVision, sometimes it drops in an episode that feels like total filler to hold off getting to what we want to see. I don't mind having a problem of the week, but when you tease season long arcs and drop them for episodes at a time, it becomes very bitty. For all the faults of Doctor Who, it has always handled season arcs amongst an episodic monster of the week format really nicely. When the Mr. Saxon or Crack in Time or Torchwood arcs were drip fed to us in those earlier seasons, it felt much more of a cohesive effort than Boba Fett showing up in The Mandalorian's first episode of Season 2, or Mando's long-form quest to find a Jedi. These arcs don't feel like they build to anything. They feel like they become relevant as and when the show feels like it. Don't get me wrong and at me in the comments saying I said The Mandalorian sucks, by the way. When it works, it's great, and I've had a lot more fun with it than anything else Disney Star Wars in the last few years. It just never quite nails its structure across the seasons, and ends up filling in the gaps with faff sometimes. Maybe Andor will squash that six hour movie problem, being 12 episodes more akin to a season of Good Doctor Who, but at the same time, was anyone desperate for 12 more hours with a supporting character to a one-off protagonist story? Was this really the thing that Disney was burning to make from a creative perspective? Can we not do more with new characters and new eras? The Mandalorian and the Acolyte are trying to do this in some form, and to be honest, these could have been the only shows we needed. Who really gives a fuck about Skeleton Crew starring Jude Law? Make more projects like The Nest, Jude, then we can talk. I don't fucking know. The original writer for Kenobi, Stuart Beatty, recently proved that the show was just a stretched out movie because the season that just finished was based upon the first script he turned in for a feature length instalment. The most depressing thing about this was that McGregor's return was originally pitched as a trilogy, that's right, a trilogy, a big budget cinematic movie trilogy, with the first movie to be what we got, only you know with less padding, and the second movie would have dealt with Kenobi's mortality. Only the Disney head honchos know what would have happened in the third instalment, but good lord, I am so very sad this didn't come to pass, and it's all because of Solo, a flawed movie that still looks better than half the Disney Plus content. That train heist is great, and better than either of those poxy jewels. Sorry. What have you become? I am what you made me. So in spite of liking The Mandalorian and Loki, and having some high hopes for Miss Marvel so far, currently for me the only show that has truly managed to escape the Disney Plus curse is WandaVision. I think Disney would be smarter to release less Disney Plus shows, and take more time thinking about why certain characters would work best on TV versus working best on film. The MCU was better when it released two films a year. If those great years were bolstered by, I don't know, one to two Disney Plus plus miniseries maximum, then I think that would be a decent amount of content. I can't keep dealing with a new Marvel thing coming out every three months, it's starting to get a little ridiculous. Anyway, if you want some awesome recent superhero TV that actually is TV and works the format to its benefit, check out Peacemaker or The Boys Season 3.
A big thank you to my full fat tier patron, Dr. Chike. If you'd like to donate money to my Patreon, you can find me at patreon.com slash fullfatvideos. You can also find my thoughts on Obi-Wan Kenobi week by week on the Full Fat Podcast, which is the sister channel you can find under the channels tab in my YouTube channel. That's the Full Fat Podcast for Obi-Wan Kenobi.